Jessica, Act 2, Scene 1. My daily routine included lunch with Alexa and the girls, minus Danielle and Anna. They sat alone. And then recess. Alexa found it funny to see how upset Danielle would get. Right about the same time I was finishing the book, Belle Teal, I loved Belle. I wanted her to be my friend. She was honest and courageous. What would Belle do in my shoes? That was easy. She would be the right thing. She would do the right thing. And doing the right thing meant giving something or someone a chance. Danielle didn't seem like any didn't seem anything like Alexa made her out to be. I decided it was time to talk to Danielle and find out myself. Act two, scene two. I set out to find Danielle on the next day at recess. I spotted her from a distance. She was drawing in the dirt with a stick. Hi, Danielle, I said as I approached, clutching my latest book where the word red fern grows close to me. What do you want? She shot back, jabbing her stick into the heart, into heart, stick too hard into the ground, causing it to snap in half. She turned away. It sounded like she was crying. Are you okay? I walked closer. No. Lexi is being mean to me and all your it's all your fault. She threw her stick into the ground. My fault? She blamed me? Why didn't I see it coming? It made perfect sense. I was the new girl and my arrival pushed her out of the group. I'm sorry, I said. I stood there. I wanted to be back in California anyway. I missed my dad. Danielle began scratching pictures into the dirt with her finger. I'm sorry I said that. It's not your fault. I sat down. It's just that Lexi's ignoring me, talking about me, saying mean stuff. Danielle went on. She didn't sit with me at lunch. She's not playing with me. And all of the other girls are doing the same thing. They always do that. Do what Alexa says. Anna's the only one who's still nice to me. And I'm not supposed to be friends with her. Why not? I asked. My family, especially my grandma, thinks she's a bad influence. I don't get it. My mom and dad used to be friends with her grandparents. You mean her parents, I interrupted. No, her grandparents. Danielle stopped moving the dirt and sat up to explain. My mom and dad are 47. They had my older brother, Charlie, when they were 20, the same time Anna's grandparents had Anna's mother. They were all friends at church. That's how they knew each other. Charlie is 27, so Anna's mom must be 27 too. And Anna's 11, I said quickly, putting it all, all the pieces together. So that means her mom was 16 when Anna was born. That's right, Danielle said. And that's why your, fam your family, especially your grandmother, thinks Anna is a bad influence, I asked. Yes, Danielle said. I think they figure Anna will be like her mother, and that's not the type of people churchgoers should associate with. I didn't like that. what I was hearing. None of it seemed fair to Anna, but I wanted to learn more about her mother's story. What happened after, after Anna was born? I'm not sure, Danielle said. I just know that it's, it's only Anna and her mother now. None of it's None of that's her fault, I said matter of fact matter of a factly. Danielle nodded. She bent forward and started drawing in the dirt again. I decided not to push it any more. She seemed upset by it too. I'll play with you, I said. You will? The hint of a smile spread its way across Danielle's dirt streaked teary face. Sure. And I won't listen to Alexa. I slid where the red fern grows to the side and dug into the earth with my finger. I know that book. My gr grandma read it to me. It's very good, I said. Everybody always likes the characters with the dog. That's something my dad told me. That's a sad, It's a sad story, Danielle said, but I won't tell you what happens. Please don't. We can talk about it when I'm done, though. Sure, she said, shrugging her shoulders. She, we sat next to each other, scratching pictures in the dirt until the whistle sounded. Recess was over. We stood up, brushed ourselves off. Then when, then when That was when I saw Danielle's dirt sketch of two dogs. That's a great picture, Danielle. Thanks, she said. I like Danielle. There's a lot of interesting things to learn about her, I could tell. I grabbed my book and we were heading towards the building. Then I saw Anna wandering over by herself. I wondered if she wanted to be a loner or did she want friends? Why did she try so hard to be invisible? She was embarrassed by was she embarrassed by her family situation and how many people actually knew all about the stuff about her mother? Act two, scene three. I was walking with Danielle when all of a sudden she rushed ahead and hurried inside. Looking up, I found out why. Alexa 
got right in my face. Like, what are you doing? I thought I told you not to be friends with her. Alexa's head jerked from side to side as she talked. It reminded me of a bobblehead. She blocked my way, her hands on her cheetah pattern hips. There's nothing wrong with Danielle. Besides, I can play with whomever I want, I said. Fine. Then, like, you're not my friend anymore, Alexa said. She knocked where the red fern grows out of my hands. as she Then she whipped around and stomped inside. I wasn't upset, but I'm not stupid, either. I knew Alexa was going to make my life miserable. That was her game, and she was good at it, too. Still, I had no clue how bad things would really get. Alexa. I saw Jessica talking to Danielle. I saw them playing. That double-crossing, no good, Miss Perfect from California. She was going to get it. I went right up to her after recess and smacked her stupid book out of her hands. Who did she think she was? Messing things up. I couldn't let her stand up to me anymore. Get away with it. Then somebody might else think they could do that too. I wasn't going to let it happen. Nobody messes with Alexa. Then I had to deal with Danielle. I caught up to her inside and followed her into the bathroom. I was like, what are you doing? She backed up into the stall. Nothing. What's wrong? I was like, you're crazy to be friends with a new girl. 